Hello, and welcome back, once again, as always, to Doomed. Solo playthroughs through Arkham Horror the card game, with a focus on roleplay and storytelling. First and foremost, if you're here from YouTube, thanks for watching the VOD. I oh! Hello, Luke. Uh, today, today's stream is being filmed in front of a live Twitch audience, uh, but if you are here watching the VOD, be sure to check down below for where we get into the action. That is, if you're uh, watching on YouTube. Uh, welcome and hello. I hope people are ready for some spooky role-playing, perhaps. Uh, oh, hello, RJ Cody. I'm going to be honest with you, Luke and RJ. I was expecting it to be just me. <laughs> and I'm so, uh, I'm so pleased that it is, that there are people here. Um, you know, you know how it is. Sometimes people are here, sometimes, yeah, it's a good time. Uh, today, um... I should mention, I think I should mention this in passing because, you know, I play a lot of, like, I play a lot of different things on this channel quite often. <laughs> I play a lot of uh, different things on this channel, um, especially on Tuesdays, right? Uh, Tespian Tuesdays or whatever the hell I'm calling them now. Um, with the purpose being role-playing. And on Saturdays, I get a real kick out of Arkham Horror, the card game, but I do realize that a lot of the content upon which the game is based is incredibly problematic. I do understand this. Um, I want to say that I'm really happy to report that the LCG is currently under the uh, design of two different people, uh, one of whom, uh, well, I don't know both of the designers super well, but the person who's been the lead designer since the inception of the card game uh, is an incredible, uh, like, uh, like, Sorry, it's just an incredible, like, trans game designer who just understands what themes can be kept and what tone can be kept from the stories and what material desperately needs changing. Uh, and I, so I'm really happy to be... I'm just really happy to be, like, playing part of the game knowing that it's problematic, but also knowing that we can do better and we can kind of improve. Hey, thanks for coming to my Scott talk. Um... Hey, Luke, you stay as long or as little as you want. I don't know what that was all about. I wonder if people watching this on YouTube are going to be like, what was that all about? I know I did. Just then. Hey, so welcome to Doomed. We're, of course, going to be continuing Rita Young's campaign through the Circle Undone. Uh, I'll, we'll, we'll do a quick recap once we get into the game. Uh, no, we're going to do a quick recap now, and then we're going to jump in and see where we're at. In brief, the estate of one Joseph Miger in Arkham, 1920-whatever, um, <laughs> uh, during a fancy party, found itself under attack from a strange spectral mist and creatures uh, therein. Uh, the guests all vanished without a trace. Uh, Jerome Davids, the protagonist of that moment anyway, Joseph's secretary, disappeared into the mist, I believe, um, or maybe he was pulled into the spectral realm. I'll have to check. But we're not sure what happened to him. Rita Young, star of the uh, Miskatonic University track team, uh, found herself alone in the woods at night, uh, further than she's ever been into the Arkham Woods. While she was there, she encountered the other star of the track team, uh, Pete Sylvester. Uh, together, they explored ruined cottages, uh, creepy tree houses, <laughs> old, old villages that had been burned down, uh, and they managed to disrupt the witch's spell. Now, we don't know much about what that was or why they were trying to cast something. We can't assume necessarily that they're evil, or at least Rita doesn't want to. She's in it to survive. She's investigating not because she needs to know the truth, not because she's an obsessive, not because she needs to protect her friends. She's just trying to survive in Arkham. She knows there are people after her, and rather than run from them, she's done running. She's gonna get to the bottom of it. Uh, Luke, just because I just saw it, uh, super cool. I'm really happy to hear that you'll be uh, tuning in for Sergey. I love streaming on Tuesday night. Um, take care of yourself, though. I do want you to be rested for your thing. Mm. For your work. Let's get into it. Hello, Osab. Welcome to Doomed. I'm very used to the crosshair being like, hello. All right, here we are in Doomed. Let's take a quick look again. 
She wants to be the final. Yeah, so what do I want to say about Rita? People deemed her to be inferior, but ever since she started running competitively, Rita only cared about the clock. The clock says Rita's faster than the rest. Obviously, I, uh, you know, don't, it's not my place to sort of be uh, role-playing, uh, you know, the, like, black American experience, for example. But I do think the character is very cool. Um, she's an absolute powerhouse. Uh, she doesn't have sort of some of the, like, uh, abilities or resources that some of the other investigators in this game do. But Rita doesn't really need anything to get going. If she has a friend, if she has a pair of shoes, if she has a gun, awesome, but she doesn't need it. She's ready to fight, she's ready to find, and she's ready to get to it. Uh, let's read our intro, then our agenda and our act, and we're gonna uh, get to it. That, well, okay, Luke, well, that, that's that's good at least. Like, I'm again, I'm just glad, just, you know, I just want people to take care of themselves, that's all. All right, did I precise enough what happened to Rita last time? I think so. Let's just quickly see what's in the um, campaign notes here. Uh, Jerome Davids was pulled into the spectral realm, but six pieces of evidence were left behind. Let's see what that means. Rita rejected her fate. Of course, she was given a tarot reading by, um, Dirt. What's her name? Anyway, she was given... <laughs> Anna Caslow, uh, the fortune teller, gave her a tarot reading, one of doom and destruction. Uh, and I seem to recall Rita saying, bullshit, uh, <laughs> before she took off. The witch's spell was broken. Hi, Super Dylan. If people are not following uh, Super Dylan and uh, their absolutely meteoritic rise to fame, I suggest you do so. Did that come out sarcastic? I sure didn't mean it to. You're a cool person, Super Dylan. Thanks for being here. Pop that popcorn. <laughs> What's happening? Let's read! This is scenario two, at death's doorstep. Ooh. Residents of French Hill are still in a tizzy about after the sudden disappearance of several guests and house staff from the home of Mr. Joseph Meiger during the night of the annual Silver Twilight Charity Gala last Sunday. We're absolutely baffled as to how this could have happened said Mr. Meiger, the day after the disappearances. That said, we are confident that Sheriff Engel and the Arkham Police will do their due diligence in finding the missing persons. There is still no evidence whatsoever as to the whereabouts of Redacted, Mr. Jerome Davids, Redacted, and Redacted. <laughs> Those are the characters we didn't choose. All of whom vanished halfway through the event and have not been seen since. The police are offering a substantial reward for any person or persons who come forward with information related to these disappearances. When asked whether the police were considering the case a homicide, Sheriff Engel had this to say. There's no reason to suspect foul play is involved just yet. However, given the circumstances, we have to consider every possibility. No other attendees have come forward with statements regard concerning the gala, which seemed to finish without a hitch, despite the disappearances quick pause that's interesting because when we played through as jerome davids everyone else seemed to have disappeared from the party it was this well it was a spectral realm really it wasn't it wasn't the same place any longer so what happened sorry so far none of the prominent members of the silver twilight lodge have expressed any concern about the lodge's upcoming benefit dinner which was recently moved to the same location joseph Meiger's estate in french hill I am certain that this event will be a smashing success, Mr. Meiger told the Arkham Advertiser in an interview yesterday. There is no reason for the fair residents of Arkham to worry. You fold up the newspaper and shove it aside on your desk, examining the other files you've collected over the last few days concerning the missing persons. It's been several days since your experience in the woods. You've tried to put it all out of your mind, but it's impossible. Every night... Oh, this is good. Every night you dream of a nameless place in the void of space, a faint discordant melody of hypnotizing flutes pulling you forward. Now there are other disappearing from the now there are others disappearing from the town without a trace. The disappearances dance along the edges of your thoughts. No reason to worry, you ponder, turning the man's word over in your head. You think of the card reader, Anna Caslow, and her warning and you wonder if you are simply imagining devils where there are none. Regardless, there's only one way to know for sure. Oh shit, you pick up the invitation, examining the silver-embossed stationery and perfect calligraphy. 
The Silver Twilight Lodge requests the pleasure of your company on the evening of November the 29th at 8 o'clock at the estate of Joseph Eckhard Meiger, Esquire, for the benefit of the Fairchild Foundation. As you prepare for the night ahead, you cannot help but wonder, are you taking action to remedy your fate, as the soothsayer advised? Or are you walking willingly into the jaws of a grim destiny? Proceed to set up. We're going to set up in a moment. Story-wise here. So, Rita... Like, Rita's attending Miskatonic University, I imagine, on... Oh, damn, hang on. We're pausing that for a quick second. Okay. Okay, well... Okay, Luke. Glad to hear you're okay, first and foremost. Like, that's the most important thing. Uh, pride does bruise quite easily, but it also heals quite quickly. <laughs> says me. Uh, I'm really glad to hear you're okay. In terms of the story here, so Rita has nothing to do with the Silver Twilight Lodge, right? She's at Miskatonic University on scholarship. Uh, she, her whole life is her running because her running is her identity. It's how she's able to get ahead in the world is how she's able to find value in the world, you know? She knows there are people pursuing her. She also knows that her experience in the Arkham Woods isn't natural, ob like, obviously. <laughs> and hearing about the disappearances, I think she has an inkling that they might be connected, right? The witches were trying to do something, but she doesn't know what. And now, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, an invitation to this gala event? Frankly, it doesn't make sense. A track star from the university shouldn't have any reason to be invited to an event like this. This is a secret society. Well, it's not a secret society. Excuse me. This is, you know, it's like the Shriners. <laughs> this is essentially um, a charitable society that has like little secret meetings and stuff. We're not quite sure why she's been invited. She's pretty sure Pete Sylvester also got an invitation, so it might be a community outreach thing, but she's decided to go and try to sneak off if possible, get a little bit more information. All right, so the setup here, um, we're setting some stuff aside, blah, blah, blah. Uh, put the locations into play, I did. We start in the entry hall. Check the missing persons section. So, place six clues on the office if Jerome David's profile is not crossed off. However, it then says, as evenly as possible, remove a total number of clues from the above locations equal to the number of pieces of evidence that were left behind. Six were left behind. So Jerome David's did his damn job. And now there's no, like, so much evidence was left behind that there's no additional clues that need to be found on the office. So, uh, this is good. It would appear that if they hadn't done their jobs, so to speak, like if they hadn't, if they had gotten killed sooner, there'd be more for us to have to look for. Um, and then there's re replacing locations and so on. Okay, so we're gonna start in the entry hall. We'll look at the entry hall. Our map is laid out just like in the prologue. There's the entry hall, the Victorian halls, upstairs is the office. To the left is the trophy room and the billiards room, and to the right is the master bedroom and the balcony. Clearly, whatever business Joseph Meiger has his hands in, it's doing well. A soft red carpet guides you deeper into the opulent hall, flanked by small statues of marble and ivory. Above, a glimmering chandelier casts a brilliant shine along the polished floor and wooden stairs. Agenda 1A. Justice 11. Be true to yourself, and seek the truth in others. You must balance the scales. You shall be called to account for your action. Ah, Osab, interesting that you mention it. Uh, Mansions of Madness is an Arkham property, much like Arkham Horror the card game, so I would imagine there would be quite a bit of overlap here. I should also mention... Uh, uh, is it still... No, it used to be called Mansions of Madness, but the game is now called Arkham Horror Mother's Embrace. I have yet to play it, I do own it, but I do know a lot of people who did voicing for it, so we will be playing it on the stream at some point. It does, though, doesn't it, Osab? Okay, Agenda 1A has an 8 Doom threshold, so that's 8 turns, theoretically, for us to get our shit together. <laughs> Silver Twilight enemies cannot be damaged or defeated, so there's going to be 
Silver Twilight people. Can't do anything to them. Fight them, I mean. Forced, when you draw a monster, instead of spawning it, set it aside and place a doom on this agenda. Okay. So, if you would draw a monster, instead, it just goes away. So that's good, right? Act 1A. Hidden agendas. Weirdly. As you approach the patio of the Miger estate, a man in an elegant suit checks your invitation at the door. Inside, guests mingle and chat with one another, but much of the conversation is awkward and terse. A silent tension has gripped the manor, and you're not sure why. It's true, Rita, of course, would have no way. I mean, first of all, the, the courage required to go to a social event where you don't know anyone, and it's like way out of your league. Out of your league. It's not part of your life experience. Takes a lot of cojones. <laughs> takes a lot of, sorry, takes a lot of ovaries. Takes a lot of grit is what I'm trying to get at here. So, good on you, Rita. Objective. Find information about the disappearances by discovering as many clues as you can. Do not advance it until you're just instructed. Hint. It may be worthwhile to investigate the last known locations of missing persons. Well, we know that Jerome Davids was in the office, so that seems like a good place to start. Discover as many clues as you can. That's the kind of objective I like to see. Just do your best. <laughs> just do your best. Let's have a quick look here. Special tokens, the skull is minus one, minus three if your location's haunted, and the elder thing at the bottom is minus two. If there's a spectral enemy at your location, blah, take a damage. We have a lot of health because we fit, but we're going to see how it goes. Okay. I think, it's, I think it's about time. We're going to see what we have to do here, but let's draw our opening hands and, um, hands, hand, and let's get doomed. Now, you might be wondering, how do I know what I'm trying to, like, keep and look for here, right? You know, often, I think what's nice about Rita and, and you know, definitely a bunch of the survivors, they don't need a lot to get going right away. They're, like, okay to just kind of do their best and get in there and, and see if maybe they tank a couple of tests, like, who cares? But typically, you, you're looking for stuff, right? If early game is when you want to be playing things because... Uh, well, late game, you might not have a chance. <laughs> so I don't want the event. I don't really care about unexpected courage. This is all pretty good, but I think I want to try to find Pete. Okay, no Pete. Well, that's too bad. Okay, but I do have to take heart, which is a really nice early game card. All right. Let's have a look at the entry hall. The entry hall is a three shroud zero clue location where I can resign. Most of the manor is off limits to guests who are not members of the Silver Twilight Lodge. But your investigation takes priority, so you wait for the right time to sneak away. Yes, Rita. Party. Okay. First action. First action, I'm going to move up to the halls. Even the hallways of this manor are luxurious, decorated with thick rugs, bizarre artwork, and uncanny statues shaped from scrap metal. Rays of sunlight shine through the curtains as the sun sets over Arkham outside. It's a four shroud zero clue location. Ooh, as an action, I can quote, go looking for trouble. Discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a silver twilight enemy is discarded, spawn it, then gain two clues. Silver twilight enemies currently can't be damaged or defeated. So maybe I do want to go for it. Rita, of course, has been sort of taking in the party, but again, there's this tension in the air. She doesn't know what's going on or, or why. She's going to go check. She's looking to go check the office. And her instincts as, you know, a rough and tumble kind of youth kick in. The best way she knows to find information is to ruffle a few feathers. People will always run to protect the thing that they're scared of losing, she thinks to herself. So my first action was to move in. My second action is going to be to go looking for trouble. I like the looks of this. Discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a silver twilight enemy is discarded. I'm not even going to look at what these do. I'm just looking for silver twilight enemies. Ugh. Oh. Sick. Um, spawn it in the Victorian halls. Okay. This is the Keeper of Secrets. Occultist. Ooh. Okay. He's like, eh, I have secrets, man. He's got aloof and retaliate. 
So if you fight him and you miss, he fights you back. He punches you back. Um, but he's aloof, so he's just going to sort of stand off on the side. Forced. Ah, oh, when the mythos phase ends, place a doom on Keeper of Secrets. Ah, shit. <laughs> That's really going to advance things real fast. Parlay, test book three. If you succeed, remove all doom. Okay. So maybe I can let a couple tick up and then come back and try to clear it later. Um, gain two clues from the token pool. So... Rita dashes upstairs, um, sees a door slightly ajar, runs to it, knocks with a big, heavy, pounding knock, and then ducks behind a curtain. She watches as a silver-haired man pokes his head out and looks both ways down the hall. He's definitely nervous, and he's hiding something. He tucks a small book into his jacket and pops back inside. Perhaps there's something in there that she needs. Um, last action. Last action, I'm going to play out this key ring, I think. Do I want to play out the keepsake or the key ring? Let's play the keepsake. I think that's a good shout right now. Uh, Cherished keepsake is, of course, a teddy bear. Uh, but for Rita, it's not. Rita, watching the person duck back inside, gets... A sinking sensation in the pit of her stomach. Of course she knew there would be secrets here, but it seems to be that maybe there's even some sort of active cover-up. She doesn't know what they're discussing in that room, nor is she going to be able to find out yet. She grips the small uh, penny that her mother gave her when she was young. You ever do that? You put a... I mean, this is quite dangerous, of course, but sometimes you could put coins on train tracks, and as a train went by, it would, like, bend them. So her bent penny is sort of her good luck charm, uh, which is what I'm going to have standing in for this cherished keepsake. So in the enemy phase, nothing happens because this Keeper of Secrets is aloof. Um, but in the upkeep phase, we're going to draw a card and gain a resource. Oh, nice. Let's look what I found. That's strong. That's going to be really useful. Okay. In the mythos phase, we're going to place a doom on the agenda. We have to place one on Keeper of Secrets. We're going to draw an encounter card. Whoops. Let's actually draw it from here. Okay. So, she's got her lucky penny. She's got her keeper of secrets nearby. Let's draw an encounter card and see what happens. Fate of all fools. Mother. We remember this from last time. The fate of all fools, of course, is to die. Uh, <laughs> the fate of all fools says choose one. If there is no other copy of fate of all fools, you have to put it into play. So... If no one has one yet, you get it. If there is another copy, you have to deal them damage or put Doom on it. The fate of all fools is essentially to mess each other up. But thankfully, nothing happens yet. Rita knows... Well, Rita has a recollection of what Anna Caslow, the soothsayer, told her about the doom that was coming towards her. I'm going to place, speaking of, I'm going to place a doom on the Keeper of Secrets because it's the end of the Mythos phase. I'm not going to bother removing it because I'm going to accumulate a little bit more. Um, I think it's time to head upstairs. Yeah, action one. Rita's going to continue. In the office, each silver twilight enemy loses aloof. Atop a steep staircase leading to the manor's third floor, far from the hustle and bustle of the party below, a solitary oak door stands sentry, guarding Mr. Miger's closest secrets. Rita finds the door latched, but it's a very simple job to insert a small wooden ruler and lift it from the outside. It clicks open, and she enters the room. Each silver twilight enemy in the office loses aloof. It has one clue and four shroud. Yikes. If you reveal a special symbol... While investigating the office, place a doom on the nearest enemy. Joseph's office is as much a display of his wealth and power as it is a workplace. Okay. Um, I think we're going to grab the key ring now. This feels like a good key ring target. Um, it's got two keys on it. Rita is doing her best to stay as quiet as possible. 
There's no reason for Joseph to come up to his office during a party, but with these sort of like business types, you never know when they might need to like, consult a ledger or like, <laughs> you know, have a quick little private meeting with one of their donors or whatever. So she has to be quick. Just in the first open drawer, she finds a set of keys, which she's going to use to try to get information from this place. Uh, I have a bunch of cards in my hand that allow me to like do things better if I fail, so I'm just gonna go for it, I think. I'm gonna, s oh, I don't even have to spend a key. I'm gonna investigate with the key ring, so she's gonna start trying keys to try to open parts of Joseph Meiger's desk. Uh, I have two intellect against the two shroud of this location, minus two because of the old key ring. Search, skull, okay, let's think about that. So, um, oh, I should have committed take heart, that was really dumb. It's fine. I, I missed the window. Okay. Uh, a skull was revealed. So I have to place a doom on the nearest silver twilight enemy. Kill. This keeper of secrets is getting stacked already. Yikes. Yeah, that's much less good, actually. Um, so minus one here, which means I would fail. However... I am going to, am I going to attempt the test again? With live and learn? No, I'm just going to be lucky and pass. Yeah, I'm just going to be lucky and pass. Uh, none of the keys seem to fit the lock to Joseph Meiger's desk. But at the very last moment, Rita spots um, a piece of wood that seems to stick out, jut out a little bit from the desk. Moving it, she realizes it's actually a hidden keyhole. One of the keys slips in like butter. I have to spend the key uh, because I succeeded. I remove a key from old key ring. I get the clue. Okay, go wind down and enjoy yourself, Luke. And that is the end of the investigation phase. In the enemy phase, again, nothing happens because that guy is just aloof. Um, upkeep, I'm going to draw a card and gain a resource. Perception, you'll love to see it. Mythos phase. We're already in big trouble with Doom. I gotta clear this guy's Doom like ASAP. Two out of eight. We're gonna draw an encounter card, so... What's gonna happen in the office? Ooh. Okay, this is a spectral monster, so normally this is a bad thing. However, if you draw a monster, set it aside out of play and place a Doom on this agenda instead. Okay. It doesn't say draw another card or whatever, so... and place a doom on the friggin' Keeper of Secrets. So, in the office, Rita manages to uncover that ledger, weirdly enough that Jerome Davids was looking at when he disappeared, although she doesn't know that. It's a list of names. Some of them crossed out, and a, a brief note on the back. It begins tonight, and the date of the disappearances. Um, a cold wave passes over her, and she looks up, but there's nothing there. Okay. Back to the investigation phase. Um, I'm going to go down, and I'm going to deal with this dude. We're going to go back to the Victorian halls. I'm going to try to parlay with this guy and remove all the doom from him. He's going to accelerate the act, the agenda, quite quickly. I'm hoping... Oh, did I already... Am I already done my music? No, not yet. Oh, go. Oh, yeah, not even close. Okay. I'm hoping that I can save myself some turns here. Um, yeah, okay. Parlay, test three. If you succeed, remove all doom. Thinking quickly, um, Rita is going to attempt to disrupt whatever's happening in that room. Um, and I think she's going to set a small fire just outside the door is what she's going to do. So I'm going to parlay and test intellect three. I have two intellects, so I'm going to commit take heart because I'm going to fail this test probably. Take heart says you may commit it to anything and it has no icons. It says if this test fails, draw two cards and gain two resources. So I'm just going to do this, and we're going to see. So I am testing two, 
to three. Yeah, big fail. So take heart will go off and I'll draw two and gain two. Um, she's not able to start the fire. And then she realizes, of course, that's probably not the best play here. Live and learn. Play after a skill test you failed ends. Attempt that test again. You get plus two skill value. So I'm now a four to three. And I am going to commit perception to this for sure. To be six to three. Um, can I do that? Yeah, why not? Uh, looking around... The, the the setting a small fire to disrupt whatever's happening in there seems to be a bad play. Instead, Rita decides, uh, perhaps on a somewhat more direct approach, she's going to walk in. No, that's... No, that's see, she's thinking about it. That's a terrible idea, because then if it is something really bad, they're going to be all over her. She's going to cause enough of a kerfuffle outside that they're going to have to come out. So she starts pulling down coat racks and gets ready to hurl it through a nearby window. Desperate times, desperate measures. So live and learn allowed me to reattempt at plus two skill value. So I'm four to three, and I'm going to commit perception to be six to three party. Skull minus one. Um, yeah, good. So that's a pass, and I get to draw a card from perception. Yes, you love to see it. Okay, um, and I'm going to remove all the doom from this dude, which feels really good. Three, saving yourself three doom feels really good, folks. You should try it sometime. Good parlay. <laughs> good parlay, everyone. Last action. Guess who's here? Sneak the, the smashing sound uh, brings the several people come spilling out of the room as Rita disappears back downstairs. She's happy that she's managed to disrupt something, although she's not 100% sure what it is and how much time she's managed to buy herself, but they seem to be trying to tidy up before um, Joseph heads back upstairs. He's probably pretty particular about the state in which his home exists. Last action, I'm gonna play down a Pete Sylvester, level two. So Pete Sylvester, the big man on campus, has become an even bigger man on campus since last we saw him. Uh, mwah, great card. Pete was, in fact, invited. Uh, he locks eyes with Rita across the hall and just a grin spreads across his face. He can tell she's just come down from upstairs and probably did something she wasn't supposed to up there. He heads over to her. And she quickly catches him up on what she was able to find upstairs. He nods. He starts to suggest that they split up and then realizes maybe they're better off sticking together. Pete Sylvester is an ally who, after my turn ends, I can heal horror from him. So he's able to sort of like deal with the horrors of the mythos a little bit better than I am, which is nice. Uh, he also gives me, ready for this, plus one agility and plus one willpower. Feels real good. Cool. Okay. The enemy phase, again, nothing happens because this Keeper of Secrets has had his ritual disrupted, so he now has no doom on him. Uh, he's aloof anyway, so nothing happens. In the upkeep phase, I'm going to draw a card and gain a resource. Oh, less good. It's Dark Pact, my basic weakness. Uh, we saw this in the last game, but the Curse of the Witches managed to discard it for us, which is nice, I guess. Basically, I can choose to deal two damage to myself and spend two resources. If I don't, if Dark Pact is still in my hand, I have to add the Price of Failure to my deck instead, which, you know, frankly seems like it's going to be bad. <laughs> Looking around the party... Rita has a, a flash from the forest. The witch that was at that gnarled tree um, and was resurrected at that strange gnarled tree. She has a very vivid flash of that woman cursing her for meddling in their affairs. Not the leader, just this one crazed witch 
Um, and Rita realizes that the dark pact that this woman has made with powers much larger than herself may come back to bite them sooner than you think. It's the mythos phase. We're going to add a doom to the agenda. We're now at four of eight. I'm going to preemptively put one on the Keeper of Secrets, even though it's not the end. And we're going to draw our encounter card. So we're now, we've now got Pete. And we're in the Victorian halls. And we're going to continue to explore. <gasps> Ooh! Hi, Peace Clarticus. How you doing? Yeah. Uh, oh, phew! That is good, actually. Yeah, I'm really jazzed that the return to is, like, out or about to come out or... Anyway, um, that tarot deck that's included seems uh, really cool. I have to say, P. Sclarticus, um, I feel like you and I have played this game before, you know, at some point in our distant past or maybe in a past life, and I think we should play again. It's a good time. Uh, that's directed to you too, the crosshair. <laughs> okay, let's draw our card. Oh, no! It's a Lodge Neophyte! Um, the Lodge Neo... <laughs> he's no keeper of secrets. Um, he spawns at any empty location. He's aloof. He puts... You put a Doom on him. Parlay test will too, if you succeed, remove Doom from him. Okay. So he's not gonna hurt me. Where would the Lodge Neo fight be? He spawns at any empty location. So I'm gonna put him... I'm gonna put him out here on the balcony, I think. And I'm gonna put a Doom on him. Excellent, Peace of Clarticus. Let me know what uh, scenarios and or campaign you'd be down for. If you just played this, respect if you don't want to play it again. <laughs> I'm also literally playing it right now, so. Because I think it would be a lot of fun. Okay. Um, taking a look at where Rita and Pete Sylvester are right now. We've got the Keeper of Secrets here with a Doom on him. Over there is the Lodge Neophyte with a Doom on him. That's two. Four on the agenda. That's six. I can maybe remove some, but it's getting, you know, time's ticking over and I have three clues only. I think we need to try to get more clues, like stat. Now, will there be more clues in the bedroom and the balcony or in the trophy room and the billiards room? Rita and Pete, I feel like they're sort of sneaky types. But would they sneak off to Joseph's bedroom? I guess if I do go that way, I have a chance to clear the doom from the neophyte, which will save me a turn. Although we're, you know, kind of getting there, so. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Rita, yeah. Uh, mm, yeah, let's do it. Rita and Pete are going to head off uh, Rita manages to convince Pete Sylvester that if Joseph Meiger is hiding things, he's either hidden them in the office, she already checked, but, you know, didn't find too much, or perhaps somewhere a bit more private, and they head off down the hall. This unmarked door is large and well-polished, set in a corner of the upstairs hallway, out of view of guests and other prying eyes. It's not out of view of Rita and Pete! Bam! This is a three-shroud, one-clue location. When the round ends... If there is at least one investigator in the bedroom, place a doom on the nearest Silver Twilight enemy. Okay. Actually, that's really bad. Because then... That'll be like seven or whatever, and then I'll be okay. So I want to try to grab this clue and GTFO is what I want to try to do. Yeah. So we're going to investigate here. She's still got her key ring figuring that it might open the bedside drawer. Um, I'm going to make it a one shroud location. I have two intellect versus the one of the location, and I'll commit resourceful, because of course Rita's very resourceful. If she needs to, she'll move some shit around, you know what I mean? Let's investigate three to one. ka <sighs> That was very close. Okay. Too close, frankly. Um, the key ring is discarded uh, but resourceful allows me to pull a card back. I can't pull back key ring because it if you succeed and this says is if it's successful yeah I'm sure the resourceful goes off first get the clue 
uh, and I get to take back a survivor card not named Resourceful from my discard pile. Uh, survivor cards are, of course, the red ones. I'm just going to see what's in my discard pile here. There's Live and Learn, Take Heart, and Lucky. I'm going to take Lucky. <laughs> Feels like a good thing to take. Um, Rita and Pete manage to... Ooh! Oh, they don't seem great. Oh, interesting, Peace Clark. I would, I would be... Ex well, I'm curious which ones you did pick up, that is. Um, I've certainly looked into them a little bit, and they definitely highlight certain aspects of each class that are... I'm not going to say unusual. I am going to say unusual. They're definitely um, not what you might expect for, like, the quote-unquote sort of baseline for that class, you know? Um, but they, they, I think they're... Yeah, I'd be curious to know how how they are in practice. Uh, more importantly, um, if you've played with them. And uh, you, no, you're saying in anticipation. Okay, cool. Well, you know, you unbox them and let me know what you think. I'm very curious to chat more about it, and hopefully, uh, we'll uh, get a chance to play with them ourselves. Reed and Pete managed to find a small key on the key ring, which just about fits the bedside drawer um, with a little bit of fidgeting and fussing they're able to wrench the drawer open inside is another scrawled note matching the one from the office uh, guardian and survivor they focus very heavily on the class strength guardian does a lot of damage through vents and survivor fails a lot but it doesn't hold her back well yeah oh that's right of course it's Stella of course it is uh, the one of the current darlings of the community in terms of investigators from my understanding which is very cool um, I'm playing I mean I think you can probably get a sense of what I'm doing with the deck Sclerticus um, you know it's Rita and I'm running agility boosts and some sort of some fail type tech and I've got ornate bow now <laughs> feels good uh, this dark pact might come back to bite me. I don't know if I want to play it though. Maybe I'll just take the. Maybe I'll just take it. Maybe I should though. We'll see if I run out of time. Anyway, they managed to find. No doubt about it. This must be Joseph Meyer's bedroom. The centerpiece of the room is a massive canopy bed, the posts of which are orna ornately carved. You see no sign of a Mrs. Meyer. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that what they find in, in the drawer is, again, a similar scrawled note. But at the bottom, there's... It seems to be a jumble of, like, names and words that Rita and Pete don't recognize. Uh, but it seems to imply some sort of meeting on the same night as the disappearances. And a location is written on it. It just says, Master of the Keys. Well, it's not a location, that's a person. Um, last action, we're going to get the hell out of here because I would have to put Doom on a nearby enemy if I'm still here, so I'm going to go. I'm going to move to the balcony. An open glass door leads onto the balcony outside the estate's master bedroom. One shroud, zero clue location. Discard cards from your hand with a total of at least three intellect icons. The guest here knows more about the Silver Twilight Lodge than they let on. Gain two clues from the token pool. Okay. And the Lodge Neophyte is here and he's aloof though i think yeah i think we're in big trouble <laughs> mm. yeah we're definitely in big trouble i'm not going to be able to clear doom oh halo welcome to doom solo playthroughs through arkham horror the card game with a focus on role play and storytelling today our uh heroine rita young uh and her assistant buddy buddy Peter Sylvester are infiltrating a gala in order to find more information about the disappearances at the Silver Twilight Estate. Yeah, did I sum that up? I think we're good. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking for clues and it is going okay. I feel like I need more and I don't have any yet. So we're going to see how that goes. Uh, okay. Right, so that was... My last action was to move in there. Um, out here on the balcony, there's a couple people enjoying smokes. Subscriber. 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 Thank you. 
Thank you, Bilbo Swaggins. Welcome to the stream. You always know just what to say. <laughs> I know. Oh, low. Low, the newest campaign does feature deep ones because it's about um, Innsmouth, the port city. I don't really know much about Shadow over Innsmouth, unfortunately, but apparently it's very cool. Uh, this, so far, all we know, there was a goat person in the woods. There were some witches. There's some cultists here. And, and there was some demonic piping. <laughs> you connect the dots. I don't know what's going on. Okay, there's a few people out here having a smoke, despite the fact that the bedroom and the hallway seem to be off limits. And a man who keeps glancing over his shoulder at Rita suspiciously. Uh, in the enemy phase, nothing happens because all the enemies are still aloof. In the upkeep phase, I'm going to draw a card and gain a resource. Unexpected courage. Seems good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of eight doom on the agenda. And we're going to draw an encounter card. Out here on the balcony! Whispers in the dark. Put Whispers in the dark into play next to the agenda deck. Each location gains haunted. Take a horror. Hush, child. It will all be over soon. When the round ends, discard Whispers in the dark. Thankfully, I'm not going to be investigating this round, so I think this is just going to float away into the darkness. That said, Rita gets the very distinct impression that the person she's been on the trail of this whole time, Jerome Davids, she gets the distinct impression that he was here in this balcony, looking out over the city as she is doing now. But she gets the feeling that when he was here, the decision was less obvious okay uh right and then i have to put a doom on the freaking keeper of secrets <sighs> uh and then we move back to the investigation phase okay okay here's the dealio if i i could move back twice and try to remove the uh doom from keeper of secrets that would put me back to six, then I'd go seven, eight again, and I wouldn't really be any better off. So I may as well just leave it, I think. I may as well leave it, try to maximize my clues. Yeah, I think that's probably my best bet. So I could parlay to um, try to deal with the uh, Lodge Neophyte. I should mention as well, in terms of how Doom works, I should just mention this, because it's important every once in a while to explain what the hell's going on. In the Mythos phase, you place a Doom on the agenda, then you check if the Doom threshold has been met. Then you draw an encounter card and anything else that happens. I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 Doom when I checked out of 8. Then I added 1 to Keeper of Secrets, so I had already checked this round. So I know there's 8 Doom in play, but I don't have to advance until the next time I check. Oof, which seems pretty good. So removing the doom from this dude is not going to do anything for me. Instead, Rita needs to try to find out more from the person in the Silver Twilight Lodge. Um, and then maybe the Dark Pact? Yeah, I'm going to deal with the Dark Pact first, actually. Maybe I'll put my bow out as well. That honestly seems like a pretty good turn. Yeah, party. Okay, first action, I'm going to discard a total of four intellect icons from my hand. Um, parlay. The guest here knows more about the Silver Twilight Lodge than they let on. Gain two clues from the token pool. Limit once per game. Rita and Pete start kind of like chatting as idly as possible with the people around them despite the fact that they, there's no way that they would ever be able to fit in at this party. They're trying to do their best to uncover as much information as possible. The people out here are... Well, tense is an understatement. They're downright anxious about something. They keep glancing around, jumping at sort of slight noises. Perhaps they're worried that something is supposed to happen tonight? They don't seem excited so much as they seem worried. 
This information isn't particularly helpful for Rita and Pete, but they do know that there's people out here who know more than they let on. She's going to duck back inside very briefly. She's going to take Pete aside and explain to him something that he needs to know. Watch this. Okay, so here's the plan. Um, Rita explains to Pete, like, Rita and Pete kind of have a moment to themselves. Pete asks if she wants to talk about what happens in the woods, what happened in the woods. And surprisingly, I think, she agrees. They have to talk about it. They were able to fight off the witches, you know, cheap shot and all that stuff happened. They were able to just, skin of their teeth, get away from the horrors of the witch's circle. Um, how are we doing on music here? Oh, uh, it's time to restart. There we go. But she tells him something that perhaps he didn't wish to hear. He tells her, uh, sorry, she tells him about Anna Caslow, about the fate that she sort of offered her, that she rejected. But then she tells him of the witch at the tree, and his eyes widen. He said, I, I didn't see her right away, but I did have a similar experience when I was on my way into the forest before blacking out and waking up here, before I was training. A woman touched me on the shoulder and spat in my face. Rita's eyes widen as Pete relays this tale because the description of the woman does in fact seem to match the description of the woman that she had to deal with in the forest who then came back to life. Sort of a weird, horrifying husk of herself. Suddenly, Rita has another flash of that woman through her mind. Her face starts to merge with that of Anna Caslow, and the soothsayer slash woman says, Wiccan, witch, sorry, says to her, a price must be paid. Power awaits, answers await, but a price must be paid. Pete its eyes kind of widen as he watches as Rita Rita her eyes go glassy she reaches down behind the sideboard or sorry this the side table in Joseph Miger's bedroom and withdraws a small dagger cuts her hand open he grabs the dagger from her and throws it on the ground what the hell are you doing um pay two to take two damage but I dealt with the dark pact Rita's eyes meet Pete's, glassy, and she says, Power awaits, answers await. And then she shakes her head, her eyes are back to normal, and she goes, What the hell happened? Her head snaps around, Pete's follows, and they both stare at Joseph Miger's closet. Rita marches over. Pete's kind of like, Hey, are you sure you should? But it's too late, she's already opened the door. Sitting inside... Joseph Miger's closet is a beautifully, exquisitely carved bow. It doesn't appear, you know, if she had to guess, it would maybe be like Central American or something in origin. It's impossible to know how old it is because it looks like it was made yesterday. And yet, who in Arkham would have made this? She tests the pull of the bowstring, it's perfect. She and Pete, naturally, at, you know, Miskatonic University, uh, they each have their sport, right? Uh, Pete, football, and Rita is a track star. But, you know, they've dabbled in other things, and she was a pretty good shot in her day. She takes the bow and turns to Pete and just says, I think it's coming. And he's like, what? So this is the ornate bow. It takes up two hand slots because it's a bow. Uh, <laughs> it has one ammo. Spend an ammo to fight. It uses agility. You get plus two agility and deal plus two damage. So that's three damage. And I can fight at a whopping like eight or something. It's real good. Uh, 
and then action, knock another arrow, place an ammo on bow. Ornate bow, sorry. So, it's, you know, gotta aim, fire, make the kill, place an ammo, etc. Not bad, though. Again, in the enemy phase, nothing happens, because all of the enemies are aloof. In the upkeep phase, I'm gonna draw a card, and gain a resource. It's this key ring I no longer need. And we move to the mythos phase. Uh, the end of the round, whispers in the dark disappears. <gasps> Paximo, hello. Welcome to Doomed. Arkham Horror, the card game uh, with a focus on role play and storytelling. Just to catch you up really briefly, because we're about to enter, I think, a switcheroo in this scenario. Rita Young, the track star of Miskatonic University, and her pal, Pete Sylvester, the big man on campus, are investigating uh, the Silver Twilight Lodge. There's been some disappearances there recently. They're not really sleuths, but they think it might, uh, hello, it, they think it might have something to do with what happened to them in the forest last time on Doomed. Um, they've managed to go through and collect a good number of clues from the place. Um, and Rita has just now found a super sweet bow, which she is ready to fight with. Okay, in the Mythos phase, I have to place a Doom on the agenda, which advances the agenda. Because I have now reached my Doom threshold. I clear all Doom in play. I still have to draw my encounter card, etc., but let's see what happens. Agenda 1B, pulled into the shadows. You've uncovered some of the evidence pertaining to the disappearances, but the truth has yet to be unveiled. If the investigators possess at least three clues as a group, three investigator means three per investigator, but there's just me, so three. They must spend three clues, okay, and spawn the set-aside Joseph Miger at the location other than the entry hall that is farthest from all investigators. Well, that's going to be the billiards room over here. Okay, so let's do that. I have to spend three clues and put this son of a gun over here. I will see what that does for me momentarily. Put those clues back over there. One, two, three. Um, let's look at Joseph Miger. So we've found enough information to uncover that Joseph Miger is in the billiards room. Joseph Miger, the lodge host, is a 3-3-3. Not bad. He's a cultist and he's elite. His retaliate, so if you fight him and you fail, he gets to hit you back. Action, if no other Silver Twilight enemy has Doom on it, parlay test intellect four to convince Joseph that he is not that this is not your doing. This. I wonder what that means. If you fail, he attacks you. If you succeed, flip this card over. Do not rouse the beast you do not comprehend. But he has victory too. Which means, Crosshair, I know you're not in the chat, but this is for future you. If I kill Joseph Miger, I get two experience points. You've been a bad influence on me here. Let's see what the agenda says. Open the campaign guide and proceed to Interlude 1, a record of those lost. Once this interlude has been resolved, remove all clues from each location in play and advance to Act 1B. I will do that momentarily. Interlude 1. Check the missing persons section of your campaign log. In order, read the sections below for each of the characters whose profile is not crossed off. So this only person is Jerome Davids. Uh, bottom left on the page here. Uh, if his profile is not crossed off and there are no clues on the office, nailed it. Joseph Miger's personal office was pretty tidy for somebody whose personal secretary just went missing. Perhaps he's just a fastidious person, or perhaps he's been scrubbing evidence of some wrongdoing. You find nothing of note in any of Joseph's files, but after some perusing, you realize there's one place you haven't checked. The trash. Rooting through the garbage bin yields fruit. Not literal fruit, of course. Near the bottom is a small pocket journal belonging to Jerome Davids, probably tossed there carelessly by the cleaning staff. You turn to the last page. There, Jerome has recorded a list of names, perhaps transcribed from Joseph's records. You don't know what it means yet, but it must be important. Record that the investigators are on Jerome's trail, which I'm going to do right now. I don't know if that's going to make a difference, but I like that we're looking for him. Um, trail. So, Paximo, welcome and how are you? I hope you're doing well on this fine Saturday eve. Uh, I've had a very busy day. Uh, no gigs or anything, but 
you know, I had a day in town. We had some Drew crew. We finished our latest uh, Nancy Drew novel. I had a little movie night on Discord recently, uh, just a couple hours ago. And now it's doomed time. Just a reminder for folks still in chat, tomorrow at noon on the Discord, we're having another movie night. We're watching Kung Fury. I've never seen it, but I hear it's very funny. If you like schl schlocky karate slash buddy cop comedies, apparently. Uh, and then at 6 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash RPG Clinic, it's episode three, season two of Exalt Witch Academy, which I'm really excited about because we're playing a new system. And uh, well, everybody loves Pyres. <laughs> everybody loves all of our characters. It's a good time. Okay, so we're on Jerome's trail. We found his little notebook. We also found some other pages and stuff. That's kind of what I said, right? We found his pages, etc. <gasps> Ran a lot of errands. Cleaned out your freezers for free airsers. You're supposed to clean freezers? Yo. <laughs> Do you think I should be doing that? Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment down below as to why I should or shouldn't clean my freezers. I'm kidding. I am aware you have to, to do those things. Yeah, it's just that I'm streaming right now, you see. Okay, uh, <laughs> here we go. Act 1B, Death Approaches. Crosshair, I know this is going to be your favorite part. Before you can investigate further, the building is suddenly plunged into icy darkness. All of the lights flicker once and are snuffed out. A thick, otherworldly mist begins to seep into the corridors, causing everything it touches to decay. I hope this isn't like the prologue where it's like, survive as long as you can, but you're gonna die. I mean, that would be terrible. Move each investigator and enemy in the entry hall to the Victorian halls. There's no one there, so that's okay. For each location in play, Find the set-aside spectral version and swap them. If there's an investigator at that location, reveal it. I'm going to do that now. Yeah, I'm going to do that now. So I have to um, I have to replace all of the uh, locations with the spectral versions. But everything stays the same other than the location itself changes. Okay. Spectral locations. Whoop. So I'm just going to replace these, and because we are in the balcony, we're going to reveal it right away. A shattered glass door leads onto the balcony outside the estate's master bedroom. Oh. Well, anyway, it's one shroud and one, one shroud. One shroud and one clue. Haunted, each of your cards with health takes a direct damage. Ugh. Clouds of dark mist loom above French Hill. Spectral shapes surround the balcony, moaning and writhing in torment. Ugh. All of a sudden, Rita, and as soon as Rita grabs that bow out of the closet, the sounds of glass shattering, screaming, and then a heavy silence fall upon the whole estate as a mist creeps up, seemingly from the ground itself. Looking out onto the balcony, the people out there are frozen in fear uh, as they stare out at the shapes in the mist just beyond them. Um, the Lodge Neophyte's still aloof. That's good. In player order, each investigator spawns one of the set-aside monster enemies at their location. Okay, well, that's a shadow hound leaping out of the darkness. A dire wolf in sort of shape only. This is a skeletal, spectral being as large as the sky. <laughs> Not really. Leaps out of the darkness. Spectral mist coalesces into an incorporeal, incorporeal canine form. Hungry eyes shine from the darkness. It preys on the lowest uh, agility, which is weirdly enough me. It's a hunter with retaliate with three health. After the Shadowhound attacks, you resolve each haunted ability on your location. I really don't like that, so I'm going to try to kill it. Yeah, I'm going to try to kill it. <laughs> Go, Rita. Or, maybe I'm just going to evade it. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I'm not going to bother. No, maybe I'm going to try to shoot it. Okay, it doesn't matter. Spawn the set aside. Oh, fuck. The spectral watcher enemy in the entry hall. Shuffle the remainder of the set aside watcher encounter set and the set aside realm of death set into the encounter deck along with the discard pile well that's great i mean that's just being great isn't it 
Okay, not lots of nice cards. And of course, we've met this guy before. This is the Spectral Watcher. There is no escaping fate. He's an ancient one. You are its prey. 353? Three, it's an alert hunter. Alert. Uh, hunter means it's coming for you. Uh, alert means if you try to get away, evade, and you fail, it attacks you. When the Spectral Watcher is defeated, instead of discarding it, heal damage, disengage it from all investigators, exhaust it, it does not ready during the upkeep phase. So you can you can disperse it momentarily. Um, let's read our new agenda and our new act, and then we'll draw our encounter card, because we haven't done that yet. Agenda 2A, Over the Threshold. Does this have something to do with the four missing persons? And if so, what does that mean for your survival? Each Silver Twilight enemy gains victory zero and counts as an investigator for the purpose of determining where hunter enemies move. Interesting. Okay, so enemies that aren't cultists are going to get attacked by... Enemies that aren't cultists are going to attack cultists. Forced. After the hunter enemies move step of the enemy phase, each ready spectral enemy deals its damage value to each humanoid enemy at its location. 11 doom. Act 2A, the Spectral Realm. In the blink of an eye, everything has changed. A sudden, oppressive silence fills the halls of Joseph Miker's Manor. Gone is the din of idle chatter from the banquet hall, the clinking of glasses, the laster, laughter of oblivious guests. Save for only you and several others, all of the people in the house have vanished without a trace. All that is left is the dark mist and the beings that inhabit it. I need four clues to advance. I have three, and there's one on this location. So maybe I should just try to get it. Ah, oh, I still have to draw an encounter card. Right, okay, we're drawing an encounter card. Watchers, oh, fuck me. Oh, this is terrible. <sighs> We'll see why in a moment. Revelation. Heal three damage from the Spectral Watcher. Ready, the Spectral Watcher. It moves, engages, and attacks as if it were the enemy phase. Throughout the resolution of this effect, the Spectral Watcher gains prey. You. Oh, actually. Okay, it moves, engages, and attacks as if it were the enemy phase, but it gains prey. You. So it's coming for me. But it doesn't move, like, infinite locations. It moves one location. Right. So if you were one location away, this would be terrible. But it's actually okay for now. Um, after the hunter enemies move step, each ready spe Okay, so he, the Spectral Watcher has moved in into this Keeper of Secrets fucking bullshit dude, um, who I think is about to bite it <laughs> or he's gonna start to get defeated by the mist we'll we'll see what happens okay okay not bad honestly not too bad we need four clues we're at a location with this shadow hound i think we want to just get rid of the shadow hound and then try to deal with the um, location here yeah rita and pete uh take cover as this beast, this like dire wolf, leaps out of the darkness. It's canine in form, but the eyes glow this otherworldly yellow-green color. It's, it's somewhat like a cat's eyes, but there's a malice to them and a coldness that they've never seen before. Seeing the guests on the, some of the guests on the um, balcony have simply vanished. The man looking very suspiciously at her, uh, is still here. He's now cowering from the beast. Rita takes aim with the bow and tries to fire directly into the beast's snout. Um, I'm going to attack the Shadowhound. It has three health and it has two combat. I think I can probably do this. Um, first action, I'm going to fight. I'm going to spend my arrow to fight. Um... I'm using agility. I have six agility. You get plus two agility. I have eight agility, and I deal two damage. Or plus two damage is three damage. So eight to to two. 
Skull, uh, minus three, because my location is haunted, but that's okay. It's still a pass, so three damage. The Shadow Hound is defeated. The arrow flies through the mist, and only what was a snarling dog like, you know, dire wolf, only moments before, disappears in a puff of mist and smoke. Pete and Rita are sure that what they saw before them was a beast with malicious intent, but it vanished as if it were simply a trick of the light. Um, now that I'm here, I'm going to... I want to get this clue so I can move on. I, I can't play the key ring because my hands are full of bow. <laughs> I'm going to knock another arrow and put the arrow back on ornate bow. Uh, I think I'm going to try to investigate. I have a lucky and one resource, so I think that's going to be okay. I have two intellect. Here's the thing. If I fail this, each of my cards takes a direct damage. Oh, you know what? I'm going to commit my key ring. There we go. So I'm three to one. Rita is furiously scrabbling around out here on the balcony trying to find any information. She happens upon the man, eyes wide, grabs him by roughly by the collar and shakes him. You better tell me what the hell is going on here. Everything you know, now, she says to him. The man's eyes gloss over and he looks pale. Rita and Pete try to sit him up, thinking he might try to faint. He might try to faint. He might faint. We're three to one. Minus two? That's a success. I'll take it. Didn't fail, so nothing happens. I get the clue from the balcony. ka -ching. The Lodge Neophyte manages to spit out a few words. He says, J J Joseph s summoned it. Rita's like, hmm? I'm going to spend my four clues and advance the act right now before the enemy phase, just just because I don't know what's going to happen. Act 2B, a way out. You find the corpse of one of the others trapped here. Yikes. Okay, so let's say that this, uh, this guy says that, and then they also find a corpse in the bedroom. Cool. A member of the Silver Twilight Lodge, you surmise, although his outfit of blue and silver robes suggests something more esoteric. Gripped tightly in his withered hands is a small tome bearing the insignia of the lodge. Browsing through its pages, you're surprised to find all manner of information regarding the mist and the creatures you've encountered, including a spell to, quote, release the bonds of death and escape the mist. How long had this man been here studying the realm? Regardless, at least you have a way out now. The mist blocking your escape recedes. Reveal the entry hall. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. I just got rid of that. Um... So I'm going to reveal the entry hall. I can resign from the entry hall so I can get out of there. Let's have a look here. Act 3A, escape the cage. Now that the mist has receded, you might be able to escape with your lives. But what about Joseph Meiger and the other lodge members left behind? Should you stay to make sure they escape or flee while you have the chance? Forced, at the end of the round, each silver twilight enemy in the entry hall escapes. They escape, okay. Move each ready Silver Twilight enemy with the aloof keyword once towards the entry hall. And then objective, I have to resign. So I have to get out. The Silver Twilight Lodge members, now that the mist has receded because of the book I got? Not super clear why the book. Oh, the spell releases the bonds of death and escapes the mist. Okay. <laughs> so I guess we did the spell. Um, but anyway, the mist has receded, so all of the, like, um, all of the, uh, Silver Twilight Lodge members are gonna try to run now, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's the game plan. Okay. That's at the end of the round. Okay. Uh, so, f f move to the enemy phase. In the enemy phase, hunter enemies hunt. So the Spectral Watcher is a hunter. However, each Silver Twilight enemy counts as an investigator for the purpose of determining where hunter enemies move. So he, so the Spectral Watcher doesn't have to hunt. The Spectral Watcher is already in the room with someone that he can hit. It can hit, I guess. 
It deals its damage value, so that's one damage to the Keeper of Secrets. Bam! Suck it, Keeper of Secrets. I'm gonna kill this guy so bad. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get this guy myself. Uh, and then, that's that. So then in the upkeep phase, we draw a card and gain a resource. Rita and Pete have, like, absolutely zero idea what kind of chaos is happening out there. She shot an arrow into that mist, and it just disappeared. At the end of the round, all ready Silver Twilight enemies move once towards the entry hall. Presumably that is the Keeper of Secrets as well. Each ready Silver Twilight enemy, the aloof keyboard. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not engaged, so this guy's getting away into the entry hall. Okay. I think I'm going to try to grab Miger on the way out. He's got victory, too. I think I want the experience points, you know. Um, oh, no, we're not even close to the investigation phase. Let's put a Doom on the agenda. Whoop. Uh, and we'll draw our encounter card. Terror in the Night. Test will four. If you fail, put Terror in the Night next to the agenda deck. If you fail by three or more, gain Surge. If there's three copies, discard them, and everyone takes three horror. Terror in the night. That screeching sound sounds from outside on the balcony. Pete and Rita get ready to get the hell out of there. I have three willpower plus the one of Pete Sylvester. Uh, I'm just going to take this test. Minus two. If there's a spectral enemy at your location, take a damage. I'm not. There isn't, so I will... Uh, I fail. Um, so I'll put the, uh, Terror in the Night next to the encounter deck. Whatever the Terror in the Night is, uh, it sounds a little closer this time. Rita's like, Gil. All right, we're gonna get the hell out of here. So we can run at any time now. I don't need anything else. I think I want to try to grab clue, or maybe grab victory points if I can. Uh, oh, and it's the end of the Mythos phase, so I put a Doom on this keeper of secrets here um i definitely want to get joseph Miger. i don't know why why can you just attack joseph Miger? you can parlay with him to convince joseph that this is not your doing oh, i guess he attacks you probably okay so if you run into him he's like this is your fault and he like leaps at you or some shit okay all right okay that's fine um, investigation phase. We're gonna move once, uh, into the billiards room. What the f Oh, I, I put the wrong room. <laughs> Phew! Uh, into the master bedroom. The door is old and partially rotted. Three shroud! One clue! Haunted, place a clue on the bedroom. Tendrils of black mist have invaded every corner of this room from the open balcony doorway causing the furniture to decay and collapse. Every piece of wood and glass is shattered and warped. Nothing is untouched. Victory one. Now, how the heck am I gonna cheat a clue off this location? I have lucky in hand and an unexpected courage, so I'm gonna go for it. I really want to. Yeah, I don't have any clues to place on the bedroom, so this actually feels okay to try. The tendrils of inky blackness coming in from the balcony are otherworldly, and neither Pete nor Rita have any idea what's going on. And yet, despite Pete kind of pulling Rita towards the exit, Rita has to see if something is there. She noticed some carvings, or the beginnings of carvings, in the... Uh, uh, headboard of Joseph's bed. Uh, not like notches on a bedpost or whatever. <laughs> Just like some scratchings. But now that the wood has started to rot away, she wonders if those scratchings will have progressed into anything more. So summoning up her courage, two wild icons, uh, she's going to try to find out what it is. So I'm going to investigate here. I am four on three. Minus one! Success! Nice. Okay, that courage really, uh, really paid off. She's able to snag the clue from the location. 
Indeed, the headboard is mostly rotted away, but she can just make out the end of one of the words, which is definitely the words secret. She doesn't quite know what to make of it, but clearly someone, probably Joseph Meiger, since this is his bedroom, at some point decided to write a note, maybe to his future self, maybe to the spirit realm. Perhaps this was somehow passed into the spirit realm. It's unclear. Um, I have one action left. If I move into the Victorian halls, the spectral watcher is going to attack me. Um, which doesn't feel very good. I think I'm going to get this guy killed before he escapes. <laughs> so instead, what am I going to do? I'm going to I'm going to draw a card. Yeah. Draw a card. Okay, cool. Nothing. Nothing nothing that exciting. All right. Not bad. In the enemy phase, hunters hunt. So the spectral watcher specifically it counts all of us as one away, so I get to choose. The Spectral Watcher apparently doesn't like people escaping his grasp as that man from the upstairs hallway runs towards the door. He trips on a bit of carpet, landing hard on his face, cracking his glasses. He looks up as a figure stands up and out of the mist and reaches towards him. His screams echo through the night. Spectral Watcher deals its damage to the Keeper of Secrets, which kills him. And he has victory zero because of the agenda, so I'm going to put him in the victory display. And I don't feel too bad about it, frankly. <laughs> um, in the upkeep phase, uh, we draw a card and gain a resource. Ooh, yes, it's I'm Done Running, which did a lot of work for us last time. Uh, at the end of the round, Joseph Meiger and the Lodge Neo... I'm sorry, Joseph Meiger doesn't move. He doesn't have a loof. And the act specifically says only the loof ones move. So this Lodge Neophyte's going to try to get out of there. Maybe I can leave him as bait and try to get Joseph myself. I mean, it's not bad. It's not a bad idea. Move back to the Mythos phase. Just checking our playlist. Ah, freak out. To freak, say chic. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Mythos phase. We place a doom on the agenda. That's two out of 11. Draw an encounter card. Ah, mother. F it was too good to be true. Turning back away from the rotting headboard, Pete grabs a hunk of wood and launches it past Rita's head. Look out, he shouts. Turning around just in time, she manages to tuck and roll as the same large canid dire wolf materializes from the black mist, this time with inky ooze dripping from its mouth. It lets out... It should be a bark, but instead it sounds raspy and dry before it launches itself towards them. Okay. Um, we're back into the investigation phase. I could shoot it. This time, however, I'm just going to get out of here, I think. Um, I'm d No. Uh, because I still have the ability to evade really well, so I think I'm just going to take it. Uh, yeah, Rita's going to just, like, grab... Uh, basically do the same sort of tactic as Pete. Just kick herself up off the ground kicking sort of like soot and little bits of concrete up into the face of the the spirit creature as she dashes off down the hallway i'm going to evade i have six evade uh, agility five from my card and one from pete um versus the one of the shadow hound so i think i'm going to be able to get away here nice huge success big evade rather than deal it a damage i'm going to use my reaction ability to move to a connecting location. Whee! Which is the Victorian Halls. And then I'm going to continue. Second action, move to the trophy room, which has a clue as well. I don't need the clue here. Rotting animal heads adorn this room's wood-paneled walls. Once a display of power and sovereignty, 
now macabre displays of death and decay. You cannot help but feel their empty eyes drill through you as you explore the room. Well, there's nothing really to explore here. I don't need the clue. I don't need nothing. I just need to get the heck out of here. If I move in again, Joseph Miger's going to get a hit off. But you know what? I think that's actually okay because I haven't, like, taken damage or whatever yet. So I think that's okay. I'm going to do it. Last action. Rita's going to keep charging down the hall right past the trophy room. From outside this room, you can hear the creaking of old wood and the patter of soft footsteps crashing the door open. Uh, is this a two-clue location or one? It's a one-clue location with victory one, but Joseph Miger is in here. The suited man looks up, his square jaw set with grim resolution. Rita points at Joseph and says, Answers now. The man's eyes glint with steel as he reaches very slowly behind the billiards table, whips out a length of pool cue, and launches himself at the two of them. You did this, he hisses. Um, okay, so we're in the billiards room now with uh, engaged with Joseph Meiger. Oh, he has retaliate. If no silver, other silver twilight enemy has doom, I can parlay. Okay, so I could try to parlay here. Not now, not this turn. If you fail, he attacks you. But I could also just try to kill him. Anyway, in the enemy phase, <laughs> Hunter's Hunt. The Spectral Watcher is going to hunt in and deal a damage to the Lodge Neophyte, who again, whose screams echo throughout the house amplified somehow by the mists, despite the fact that most of the other sounds seem to be gone from the from the home, the uh, sounds of his screams echo throughout the, man the mansion. He, again, he has victory zero as per the agenda, so he goes into the victory display, not to be redrawn. Um, okay. What's my objective? Resign? Resign before the Doom Threshold, I guess? Yeah, okay. Uh, and then... So Hunter's hunted. Uh, and then Joseph Miger does a damage and a horror. I'm going to put the horror on Pete Sylvester. Because he will be healing one at the end of his turn. In the upkeep phase, I'm going to ready my shit. Draw a card. Gain a resource. So Rita and Pete are currently tangling with the host who has... He, with grim determination, seems ready to fight his way out past these two young people whom he doesn't even know. Maybe she'll be able to convince him. Or maybe not. I'm going to draw an encounter card here. Shapes in the Mist. Naturally, there are shapes in the mist. I love this art. I don't know if you can really see it. Um, the mist up top there, there's definitely shapes in it. And the more you look, the more you see kind of thing. It's great. Oh, it has Surge. Is that... No, it can't be. Just my imagination, surely. Resolve each haunted ability on your location. Surge means draw another. The haunted ability said, discard an asset or take a damage. I'm going to take a damage. Joseph Miger swings his billiard cue wildly, and it, uh, it just catches Rita on the elbow as she manages to tuck back slightly away from it. Uh, Gain Surge, so I have to draw another card. Wraith! Oh, no! Behind Joseph Miger. Holy shit. Behind Joseph Miger, one of the paintings starts to tear open from the inside, and a horrible scream erupts from within. So Wraith is a 2-2-2 hunter. It's a spectral monster. It has hunter. Okay, fine. When it, Wraith is defeated by damage, except from a spell or a relic... Instead of discarding it, attach it to its location, it gains Haunted Spawn Wraith. So if you manage to defeat it without using, like, magical stuff, it, it will hold, It will sort of sit there in the mists and respawn if you try to investigate too much. Thankfully, the Ornate Bow is a relic. But I also, I like, I need to deal with Joseph Miger. Uh, maybe I'll... I don't know, evade or something? Get the hell out of here, maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, investigation phase. Yeah, I'm here to I'm here to do something. 
Let's talk role-playing moments here. I'd love this. Um, I would love to get the uh, victory point here. Um, that might be asking for a lot. Uh, maybe I have to deal with Joseph Miger. Test intellect four. I mean, there's just no way. I have a lucky, but like, I think I'm better off just shooting him. The man continues to pummel Pete Sylvester, who's defending himself as well as he can. Uh, the man, you know, Pete Sylvester is a young, tough quarterback. He's a strong guy. But Joseph Miger seems driven by something more than his own strength. He seems driven by something in his own mind. Plus, there's that screaming wraith behind him. First action. Crosshair, when you're watching this, we're going to shoot Joseph Miger. I'm going to shoot Joseph Miger with the ornate bow. Uh, or should I take out the... Should I take out the wraith first? Because I could just evade the guy. No, 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 no. We need to do this the right way. I'm shooting him with the bow. Um, shooting him with the bow. I have, again, I have eight agility versus his three combat. Um, oh, I'm done running. Ready and engage all enemies at your location. Whenever you evade an enemy, I may deal it a damage. Actually, hang on. So is that better? Sorry, I'm just, I'm thinking out loud here. If I'm done running, I could evade and defeat the wraith and then also... I wouldn't have to evade Joseph, I would just shoot him. But that's, it, it's it's action compression in a way that I think I want right now. So, yeah, we're going to do it. I'm done running. Rita looks back towards the door and then notices, and then, and then notices, and then realizes that if she gets out of here, it'll be without Pete. And she can't have that. It's not that she loves Pete. Yet. It's just that he's been there for her, and these two are going to have to stick together. She first she grabs um, a, a log that seems to be sort of smoldering in the fire and stabs it at the ghostly apparition in the painting. She's going to try to deal with the wraith. I'm going to evade the wraith. I have six agility versus the two of the wraith. Paximo. I ship it. Me too. Look, I don't know if you can see the art here, okay? But this is Rita Young. Track star. Awesome. Pete Sylvester, big man on campus, you know what I mean? The broad-shouldered young man exudes the sort of confidence confidence, confidence one only finds in youth. I ship it. <laughs> it's like you and me, Paximo, except if you were this athlete and I was this quarterback. It doesn't make sense, Paximo, okay? Don't, don't, just don't read too much into it. I don't know what I'm talking about. We're going to evade. I have six uh, agility versus the two of the wraith. Kaboom! Damn. Damn, sorry, good. Minus one means I go down to five to two. Still a pass. Uh, how are we doing on sound? Good. We're going to evade it. My reaction says I can deal it a damage. I'm done running says I may deal it a damage. So I kill the wraith. It doesn't die. It just attaches to this location, but that's okay. Second action, I'm gonna shoot Joseph Miker <laughs> with the bow. Let's go. Pew! I'm going to shoot him with the bow. I have eight agility. Uh, she sticks the burning log into the painting, and the creature's cries sort of echo and die out. Whirls around, whips the bow from her back, knocks an arrow, and just shouts, Pete, incoming! And launches the arrow straight at Joseph Miger. I don't know if she's hoping to just scare him off or if she's hoping to hurt him, but let's see. That's eight to three. Yeah, minus two. Uh, if there's a spectral enemy at your location, technically there is. It's at my location, so I'm going to take the damage. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that that means take the damage. However, it's still a success, so I'm going to put three damage on Joseph Miger and kill him, and he goes in the victory display. The arrow embeds itself deep into Joseph Miger's chest. He looks very surprised and topples over, unmoving. Pete looks up 
at Rita. There's horror in his eyes, but only for a moment. He looks down. He looks at the weapons the man was holding, and he just says in a very small, uncharacteristically small voice, Thanks, Rita. And she goes, well, you can thank me later. We have to get the hell out of here. Last action, I'm going to knock another arrow. Boom. Well, I'm done running. We were done running. We fought. Uh, we're going to move on to the enemy phase. In the enemy phase... Uh... <laughs> yes, Paximo. Paximo, I'm playing this uh, campaign as I have played all campaigns. I'm trying to play it in a role-playing style. And I'm like, what would this track star sort of like physical being do in the moment she's got a bow she's got some she's got some gumption what she's got some chutzpah what would she do but i like your story as well pete sylvester starts to oh, on his feet a little bit and rita runs up and grabs him he steadies himself on her shoulders and looks deep into her eyes thanks rita he um that's it when you have like a deep husky voice he husks at her <laughs> Enemy phase. The spectral watcher's gonna hunt Ooh, to the trophy room. The shadow hound's gonna ready, and I am going into the upkeep phase, where I will ready my uh, things here. Draw a card and gain a resource. Resourceful. You love to see it. And we go into the mythos phase once more. That's four out of eleven doom. Still have a lot of time. I don't. I get, you know what? I bet you there's experience. No, sorry. I know that there are victory points on the office, but there's no way I'll be able to get them. I just don't have the, yeah, I don't have the, like, I don't have the tech for it. If I can secure this one from the billiards room, I think that's going to be real good. I might be, uh, it doesn't feel good. Anyway, mythos phase, I have to deal with this first, so... A, f a presence is coming down the hallway towards Rita and Pete. They shake off whatever moment they're having together as whispers sound all around the room. Whispers. Oh, sorry. At the end of my term, I should have healed a horror from Pete Sylvester. Should have done so. Because he, you know, the, the, the horror he had in his heart was healed by the power of love <laughs> from Rita Young. Um, whispers in the Dark goes next to the agenda deck. Every location gains haunted, take a horror. So if I fail to investigate a location, I have to take a horror. I do not like my chances. Sometimes you gotta risk it, I feel. Ideally, I would get this clue, move to the next location and evade the watcher so that I could keep moving. That would be the ideal. What are the odds of getting this? Actually, let's talk about that for a second. If I fail, I have to discard an asset or take a damage. I have to take a horror from the Whispers in the Dark. Fine. But it also respawns the Wraith. That's a bit bad. <laughs> I need cards. I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the watcher come in and, and take me out if I need to. Well not take me out, but you know what I mean. I'm gonna draw a card. Waylay. Waylay. It's elite. Okay, so that's not very useful. Action two, I'm going to draw again. It's the other Pete Sylvester. Ah, do I just go for it? I don't have enough intellect. I, I don't think this is a good idea. Um, am I just going to sit here and friggin' take damage for no reason? <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> is that weird? Um... Oh, if I, uh, if I resourceful next turn, I can get something back that might be helpful here. So I'm just going to draw again. Alter Fate. Alter Fate is a spell. It costs an experience because that's, it's what I took with one of my eight experience from last scenario. Choose and discard from play a non-weakness treachery that is not attached to an elite enemy. We make our own fate. I love the art on this too. It's like, hey, you know that that fortune teller who gave you the tower? Fuck that card, and you like tear it up. Uh, although it is a spell. So why I'm able to cast a spell to alter my fate? Unclear, but I could use that card to discard Fate of All Fools, or Terror in the Night, or Whispers in the Dark. 
but that doesn't really matter right now. I spent the whole turn drawing cards. Like an absolute fool and a half. I don't think that was the right play. <sighs> Rita's trying to get her bearings here as she tries to figure out if there's anything in the billiards room for her and Pete to... Well, let's be real. They're just holding each other gender, uh, gently right now. In the enemy phase, Hunter's Hunt, the, the Shadow Hound hunts. Spectral Hunter sh hunts... Spectral Watcher hunts in. Uh, it will deal me a damage and a horror. The damage is going to go on me. It's getting a little dam dangerous here. The horror is going to go on Pete. Upkeep. I'm going to ready all my shit. Draw a card and gain a resource. Perception! I really didn't think I had any of those left, actually. Okay, so it's looking okay now. Not great, you know, but okay. As we move into the mythos phase. Whispers in the Dark goes away, because it was until the end of the round, yeah. Five out of eleven doom. We're going to draw a card from the encounter deck. Another Shadow Hound! Oh, now, th now, now things are getting interesting. Now things are getting really interesting. Okay. Now, okay, this, now this is... Okay. Oh, hello to you, Zachary Lee Antle. What is happening? Welcome, Zach. Did I catch you on Doomed a couple weeks ago? I think I did. Welcome back to Doomed. We're playing Rita Young and with ally Pete Sylvester through the uh, Circle Undone campaign. I'm currently at a party gone wrong, uh, and I'm currently swamped with enemies. Just happened. Pretty bad news. I wish I had kept... I'm done running. Okay. God, all this damage. Okay. So ideally what I would do is I would evade the Spectral Watcher, I would evade the Shadow Hound, and then I would try to get this clue. Then they would both ready. Well, no, I would evade the Spectral Watcher, I'd shoot the Shadow Hound. Uh, pfft, sack. Hey! Uh, no, uh, it's, well, clearly not. Um... I feel like, a, yeah, Italian-American, I feel like Tony Tugaboto was pretty close. I need a good, like, game for an Italian character, though, you know? Actually, I'm really jazzed because I feel like the doc is going to come back soon. I love Dr. Surgeon MD. Big fan. Maybe some Surgeon Simulator VR. I mean, anything's possible. You know what I mean. Okay. So I feel like the game plan is really straightforward. I'm going to evade the Watcher. I'm going to shoot the Shadow Hound. I'm going to get this clue. Or do I just... Oh. oh, I see how it is. I really should watch that trailer, actually. I feel really bad. I haven't watched it yet. Eee! But I hear it's I hear it's interesting, so I'm, I'm excited to look into it. I would love to get this clue. Yeah, oh, of course, that's exactly what... Okay, okay, okay. Okay, we're gonna shoot the Shadow Hound. Uh, I don't really need a lot of help in, like, evading or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna shoot the Shadow Hound, and I'm gonna commit resourceful to this test to try to get something back that I need. Um, coming in through the hall is a wave of rolling mist, and then standing up and out of it it's approximately humanoid in shape, but it seems to be somehow both corporeal and made of mist, much like the shadow hound that smashes through the window at the same time. Rita and Pete look at each other, and a look passes between them that maybe this is the end for them. But she's not sure, and she's definitely got not going down without a fight. Uh, I'm going to shoot the shadow hound uh, and try to kill it. I have. Um, whoops, I shouldn't do that. Why would you put it in the trash, buddy? Uh, I have, yeah, I have um, six agility plus two from the bow is eight to two. Uh, sorry, nine because of the resourceful. Is that smart? No, I'm going to save resource. No, no, I'm saving resourceful for the next test. Eight to two. Success. I have to take a damage, though. So things are getting real dicey now because of the elder sign or elder thing. Okay, so I shot 
the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy. Shoot your shot, Pete! I mean, wait, what? Shoot the shot? Yeah, right, yeah, shoot your, sh <laughs> shoot your shot, Pete! <laughs> now, Paximo, did you mean, like, you know, take a chance on Rita? Ask her out to the... Or ask her out to get a malt when all this blows over? Or did you mean... Look, look, I'm just asking. I'm just asking the question, okay? Um, okay, so action one was to shoot the Shadow Hound. Action two is going to be to evade the Spectral Watcher. I have six agility, and now I'm going to throw in the Resourceful and try to get something good back from this. Yeah, let's do it. Um, seven to three. Still a success, so I've evaded it, and I'll put a damage on it rather than move. Put a damage on the Spectral Watcher. I think this, all this unspeakable things. <laughs> yeah, Zach Greeliantle, when is that? Sorry, can I call you Zach? Uh, when is that coming out anyway? I feel like I've seen trailers for that for like a year. I mean, I realized a lot of movies were like, you know, pushed back for some reason. Just thought I heard something from the ceiling. Uh, <laughs> Baximo, I tend to agree. I mean, I think I can think of a few things that might be further from her mind than a malt shake. But uh, I do know what you mean. We're in a bit of trouble here. Rita manages to fire off another arrow. It disperses the dog-shaped mist, which again, it's so real, and yet all of a sudden it just vanishes. She manages to slide under the billiards table as the Spectral Watcher loses sight of her. Uh, last, oh, Resourceful went off, so I'm going to choose a Survivor card not named Resourceful and add it to my hand. I don't want the key ring. I might want, look what I've found. Whoops, that went in the wrong person's hand. I, th I don't want Take Heart. I think I want Live and Learn. Oh, fr French fries, right, for sure. French fries, for one. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't know what I mean by that. Uh, okay, look what I found and live and learn. Look what I found helps me get clues. It's also just straight intellect icons. Live and learn is a wild, though. I, I'm gonna keep live and learn. I think I'm probably also gonna regret that. That's okay. Last action, we're gonna investigate this location. And then hopefully next turn we can, like, start to make our way out of this godforsaken... <laughs> oh! Paximo, what does it mean? What does it mean? <laughs> uh, you old son of a gun. Oh, boy. Okay, um... <laughs> I have two intellect. I'm gonna play perception to be four... three i can't fail this i can't fail this i'll live and learn this if i have to but oh okay no i, I do know what you mean that's, that doesn't really make sense to me either um i have to okay so four to three and i'll lucky if i can hopefully it clearly means something hmm let's do it rita i believe in you Fuck yes, Rita. Fuck yes. Okay, I had two intellect plus two book from perception. Four to three with a zero means I'm still four to three. I get the clue. I don't trigger any bad stuff. I draw a card from perception. Everything is bon. Ah, great question, uh, Zach. Um, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna say briefly. I'm gonna say that then. Uh, when the trailer for Green Knight? Is that what it's called? Green Knight? Came out. Uh, I was not particularly excited. For whatever reason, when it came out, I was like, oh, look, like a moody, atmospheric, like, medieval fantasy thing. Like, yawn, and I just disregarded it. Despite the fact that A24 also was the production company behind The Lighthouse, one of my favorite movies of the last five years. <gasps> Elizabeth Neal's here. G guys, uh, Liz Neal's here. Quick, uh, put away all your uh, fireworks. Um... I was just saying, Liz, movie I'm excited for coming out, Green Knight. Um, but based on what I've seen reviews-wise and re-watching the trailer race recently, I'm going to say The Green Knight, which is out now, I think. So does that still count? I'll take it. Okay, here we go. Enemy phase. 
Uh, enemy phase. Oh, geez, that was that was a, that was a lucky play. I can't believe I got that clue. The shadow hound hunts. Um, the spectral watcher will ready and re-engage me. Uh, in the upkeep phase, I'm gonna draw a card and gain a resource, and I'm gonna be very. Yes, I. I'll be honest with you, Antle, and I think you would agree with me here. It's a hard movie to watch. Um, that it, that is a hard movie to watch. Uh, I also chose to watch it alone, which was a poor choice. <laughs> I am not that guy who's like, oh, hooray, a horror movie. And then I just like, right now I'm surrounded by open windows and I'm all like spooked out and stuff. That's, uh, that was, that was quite something. Okay. Upkeep done. Uh, I have to discard down to eight cards. Blah. I think I'm going to toss one of these guts because I don't think I'll need as many guts in this scenario move to the mythos phase things are looking a little tense but we're in good stead we're at 6 out of 11 doom let's draw an encounter card here and then let's get the F out of here it's terror in the night test will 4 I'm going to test will 4 I have 4 willpower and I'll throw in my other guts I have to draw a card though so maybe I won't actually I'll throw in Pete the other Pete and the other cherished keepsake. Haha! -ha! Fast color was also really good. Paximo, great shout. That's a Liz Neal suggestion. I was like, oh, sure, okay. Watched it. Damn. Doo -doo 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 -doo. That was great. Uh, yeah. yeah. Antel, I am with you on that. Um, okay. Plus two will makes me six to four. I don't really care if it goes into play. Nope, okay, I passed anyway, so we're good. This time, that shrieking sound from outside is louder and closer, but Rita just shakes it off. No time, no fucking time. Gotta get out of here. Oh, I see how it is, Paximo, I see how it is. Oh no, Liz for, oh, it's cause I'm using Streamlabs chatbot. What emote are you using? Please describe it to me. Elizabeth A. Neal, please describe the emotes that you're using. Thank you. <laughs> We're almost done this scenario, folks. Okay. S game plan. Evade, move, evade. Move? Yeah. Awesome. Let's party. Um, I'm going to evade the Spectral Watcher again. And I'm going to... Um, I don't think I need to commit waylay. I have six. I'm going to commit these track shoes to be seven to three. So, uh, underneath the billiards table, Rita finds a little scrap of paper. Um, it d honestly, it just has a few words scribbled on it, but she thinks like, hell, it might be a clue that Miger might have dropped. His body is still on the floor. It's getting cold now, but it's still there, so maybe he dropped it from his pocket. Tried to get rid of it on his way out. She also grabs a few sh few more scraps of paper from the still smoldering fire, assuming he was trying to burn something in here. Uh, I'm going to try to evade and get the hell out of here, so we're 7-3. to three. Good! Big, yep, good! Big evade! Uh, give me a free move! into Back into the trophy room where I am engaged by the King Shadow Hound, which I will also evade. I'm six to one this time. Uh, Elder Sign. Until the end of the round, ignore the limit on the above bleh ability. That works for me, so I'm going to evade and I'm going to move again. Whoop! That was pretty strong. Uh, so Rita is literally just rushing from room to room, dodging as like shapes coalesce from the mist. She's like, you know, juking to one side. She's using her like uh, hurdles jumping ability to leap over uh, tables that have crumbled and toppled over parts of the walls that are starting to collapse. She's in the, uh, the Victorian halls and then dashes downstairs to the entry hall. I don't think it's worth going in uh, victory point hunting. I'm just going to get out of here. Last action, move to the entry hall. I can't resign because I'm out of actions. So I just hope to not die here. 
In the enemy phase, nothing happens because um, the enemies are not ready. But then I will ready them in the upkeep phase. <laughs> also, a Liz. Also, a Liz. Um, draw a card and gain a resource. I would have liked breaking and entering before, but what are you going to do? Mythos phase. Okay, good. We're, we're basically there. We're basically there. Feels good. 7 out of 11 Doom. Draw an encounter card. As Rita is rushing towards the door with Pete hot on her, on her heels, like, every the, the, the whole party has gone to shit so fast. They were able to find out information about Joseph Meiger. They were able to find Jerome David's notebook, notes upstairs in the office trash. They found the shriveled corpse of one of the Silver Twilight Order um, by reciting some sort of incantation the mist blocking the exit has receded, but in the panic to leave, she shot a very powerful man with an arrow, no less. Classic. Right here at the exit. Stan the door blasts open, and standing on the doorstep is a spirit creature whose jaw just drops. It's not off, but it drops so low it looks like it's touching the ground and a wail comes out of it, a keening sound. There's a wraith at my location, which engages me immediately. Uh, however, in the investigation phase, I can just resign and I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah, no point in going back. I think we're good, I'm just gonna resign. First action, resign. So, uh, Rita, whips the bow off from over her shoulder. There's no arrow knocked, but she essentially just slashes it through the air. The wraith takes, uh, floats backwards, screams as the relic swings towards her, and they dash off. She and Pete rush off uh, through the night. And we have successfully resigned. So we are going to advance to act... 3B. Alive. For now. Coming to this place was a terrible mistake. You had hoped to uncover evidence pertaining to the disappearances at the estate, not become victims yourselves. As you tear through the entry hall and slam the manor's heavy front doors, you vow to put as much distance between you and the Miger estate as, pos as you possibly can. Unfortunately, your plan is quickly derailed. That doesn't sound very good. Anyway, resolution one. That went pretty friggin' well. I'm... I, I know there are victory points on the office because there were when Jerome Davids was there. But it's not worth trying to get, like, uh, you know, how how much damage did I do? I took seven out of nine damage. Like, it's just heavy. All right, let's have a look. Uh, resolution one. As soon as you emerge onto the patio, you are surrounded by grim men in trench coats. Oh, shit. Several of them reach into their coat pockets. A warning not to do anything too hasty. Uh, naturally, Rita kind of has the bow slung back over her shoulder, and they don't seem to notice or care why this young woman might have a incredibly beautiful uh, <laughs> Mesoamerican bow. Before any threats can be fulfilled, the silence is vo uh, broken by an icy voice. Now, gentlemen, there is no need for that. The men withdraw to reveal an elderly man that you recognize as Carl Sanford, the president of the Silver Twilight Lodge. Despite the dangerous situation, his expression is almost too casual. The complete lack of fear in his posture and his actions suggest a confidence backed by substantial power. His bodyguards take several steps back, allowing you to speak to Mr. Sanford in private. In your campaign log, record that the investigators escaped the spectral well realm, realm, realm. Earn victory X. That's going to be four experience. Two for locations and two for Joseph Meiger. I'm pretty sure. Let's just have a quick little look. One for the bedroom. One for the billiards room. And two for Mr. Meiger. That's going to be four experience. Not bad. That's another bow and something else maybe. Or I'll see what else I got. Um, so let's... I'm going to note that down here. Four experience. And I'm going to write, oh, sorry, the investigators, Rita. I'm just going to write Rita is on Jerome's trail. Rita is on Jerome's trail and escaped the spectral realm. I mean, for now, anyway, we'll have to see how that goes, I suppose. 
proceed to interlude two, the price of progress. If at least one of the investigators has the silver twilight trait, I don't. So I'm going to go to the price of progress too. I regret that we must meet under such unfortunate circumstances, Mr. Sanford says offhandedly. You narrow your eyes. You suspect fortune had nothing to do with it. You ask him what will happen to those still trapped inside. Human progress requires sacrifice, Ugh, he recites stoically. It is lamentable when that sacrifice is in blood, but the price in lamentation does not outweigh the yield of our labor. So Rita immediately is just like, old white guy, talking about the sacrifice of others so that progress can be made, don't like it, feels bad, man. You didn't come here to listen to Mr. Sanford proselytize, proselytize about sacrifice. You came here for answers. You demand an explanation. But the elderly ma man cuts you off with a scowl. Yes, yes, you speak of the incident last week. That was the creature's first manifestation and the arrival of the dark mist, which you encountered inside. He glances at the front door and clears his throat. The lodge was not involved in the disappearances that occurred that night, he explains after a short pause. But we couldn't exactly go to the police and tell them a creature made of mist kidnapped four people in Mr. Miger's household, could we? So we had to take matters into our own hands. We suspected that a creature was drawn to a crowd, so we recreated the incident in order to understand what happened, discern its motives. The decision to host another event at Mr. Miger's estate so soon after the disappearances makes sense to you now. As much as you hate to admit it, there is some logic to the plan the Lodge put into action although you don't particularly like being used as bait. Frankly, I don't know if Rita does really appreciate the quote-unquote logic of this scenario. It really does not feel very good. Who knows how many innocent bystanders were put in mortal danger? Even if the goal was noble, was it worth the sacrifice? I hope you understand that our organization only seeks the betterment of humankind. There are harsh truths that lie beyond our five senses, Mr. Sanford says, his expression grim. If we are to survive and prosper, we must adapt. We must learn. We must understand. This is what our order seeks to achieve. A greater understanding of the world around us. A worthy pursuit, don't you agree? Check the Silver Twilight enemies in the victory display and beneath the entry hall. If Joseph Meiger is in the victory display. You. Proceed to four. Before you can reply, one of Sanford's men emerges from the house behind you. He sheathes a long silver blade as he addresses Mr. Sanford. There's no sign of Joseph inside, sir. The man eyes you suspiciously, keeping his hand on the hilt of his sword. His posture reminds you of that of a knight, stoic and rigidly, rigidly disciplined. I see. Now, naturally, they're assuming that if there's no sign of him inside, that he was already claimed by the mist. Because otherwise, he would have escaped, and they would have known that. A great loss for our order, but one we anticipated. Gather the lodge's belongings from inside the estate. I will deal with the consequences. The knight nods and heads back inside. Carl's cold blue eyes turn back towards you. As for you, I would ask you to leave this place at once. You have done enough harm as it is. Before you can protest, he commands the other men nearby to escort you off the premises. And you have little choice but to comply. Joseph disappeared into the mist. Rita is an enemy of the Lodge. Yay! I love being an enemy of the Lodge. Just recording this in my little book here. The story continues in scenario three, Da Secret Name. Ooh. Oh, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? You are being hunted. What does that mean, I wonder? Oh my god. Oh, that's so exciting. I don't, I don't know what that... Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Woo! Okay. That was pretty exciting. Uh, let's just quickly save this. We're going to overwrite it. Set it up for next week. Um, so. How did that go for us here? So Rita managed to find out a bit about the disappearances. She found out that there was a conspiracy within the within the Silver Twilight Lodge, but not a heck of a lot about what it was, other than the fact that they've been researching this thing. But then Carl Sanford essentially just confirmed that without even being asked. He was like, yes, yes, I'll tell you everything. 
Rita's made an enemy of the Lodge, and rightly so. I think, much like her, I would tend to agree. Uh, a misty creature kidnaps some people, and your immediate thought is to invite more people to the estate where more people will die so that you can try to figure out its motives. It's not its not bad logic, it's just kind of callous, and I, I feel like if Rita's anything, she is a, she feels very strongly, you know? But I think they say that went pretty well. Thank you so much for joining me this evening on Doomed. Reminder of some streams we have coming up uh, this week, well, tomorrow specifically, just over the coming days. Tomorrow at noon on Discord, we're watching Kung Fury at noon Eastern. At 1800, that's 6 p.m. Eastern, on twitch.tv slash RPG Clinic, uh, it's, if you haven't joined the Discord, there's the, um, oh, it's weird. Sorry there. Oh, look at all. Oh, jeez, I missed everyone's thing. Oh, nothing. Sorry, guys. The I thought nobody was chatting because my chat didn't update. Um, sorry. Now I'm gonna look here. It'd be amazing. Lodge is up to no good. Uh, Antel. Uh, where am I? ah, Pita, Peta. It's Rita and Peter. Uh, or Pita from the Hunger Games. <laughs> We're gonna ship the name Pita because I feel like. Uh, Reiter is a little, like, not as good. Sorry, folks, for not responding to that sooner. I really didn't see those um, names, uh, those uh, chats until quite recently. Uh, yeah, so thank you for so much for joining me on Doom. Tomorrow, as I mentioned, at noon, we're watching Kung Fury on the Discord at 1800 on RPG Clinic. It's Season 2, Episode 3 of Exalt Switch Academy with me and Liz and Kate and John, and it's a great time. Uh, and then on Tuesday, I'll be back on this channel, not with more Doomed, but with more Outer Worlds on Sergey in Space. And there are streams throughout the week. Stay tuned to the Discord. Stay tuned to Twitter. Drink lots of water. I'm going to have some water because I've all I've had is a beer for the last couple hours. Uh, I'm going to have some water, and I'm going to enjoy the rest of my eve, and I hope you all do too. Paximo, thank you, and thank you all for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun. I think that was a pretty good run, honestly. Rita is a real powerhouse uh, if she needs to get out of somewhere. <laughs> She's pretty resilient, too. So have a wonderful evening, everybody. Hope to see you on the Discord. Hope to see you around the place. Um, and I'm sure there's a good joke to end on here. Um, but yeah, let's uh, three cheers for PETA. <laughs>